going to be tying up a wet fly today from Ray Bergman's book Trout. This is called the Fitzmaurice. I think that's how it's pronounced. Interesting thing is I ran across this in the book and I, I liked it because it's just a bright color. It is a wet fly that has a chenille body. It's got a chenille butt and sh the chenille body, no rib on it, no tip or anything. The throat is just some yellow hackle and it has a brown mallard in the wing. Now, I also did a little research on this fly and found it's spelled two different ways. The Fitz, F-I-T-Z, and then the Maurice, M-A-U-R-I-C-E, all with one word, but I've also seen it spelled with a hyphen in between Fitz and Maurice. So I'm not certain the history of it, and I'm not certain where it actually came from, what, what the correct uh, spelling is and, and possible or pronunciation. But that is the Fitzmaurice, very colorful attractor pattern, and I'll get started tying. start Fitzmaurice with my hooking device. This is a must add 33.99 in a size six. I'll go ahead and debarb the hook. For thread, I don't have to worry about a floss body, so I'm just gonna use a black Danville 6 aught. I've already waxed my thread and attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Run it down the shank of the hook, getting a nice base layer of thread. There is no tip on the Fitzmaurice. There's a tail made of peacock sword and then a butt made of black chenille. So I'm gonna get my thread right to the end of the body here and I've got some peacock sword. I'm going to isolate four, maybe five. It depends on the size of the hook and, and how much of the tail you want. I think four is, is uh, plenty there. Take those off. And I'm going to measure those so they're about a shank length long. And then I'm going to tie those in right at the end of the body. Maybe going down just a little bit on the bend, wrap there. Trim those the length of the body. Again, I have a chenille body on here, so I don't have to worry about it being ultra smooth and everything under there. Now, there is a butt on this fly and it is black chenille. I'm using a fine rayon black chenille. I'm going to strip away some of the fluff on the end of this and I want to tie this in so that I get right the beginnings of that chenille right up to the end of where that tail is. I'm going to wrap that in. I'm going to advance forward maybe not even to the point of the hook, just a little bit, because I'm going to just put one wrap in here. But the thing is, if you'll notice, it's kind of sparse right there, but there's a little bit of a gap there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to twist this up so that my chenille is nice and tight. And I'm going to wrap this around here. Notice when I come around the bottom here, I really don't have anything on the side here. So this is where my wrap actually starts. I'll get one wrap right back there, and that's the butt section. I'll bring it back around, and then I'll wrap it off, tie it off, I should say, right there in front of it. Three wraps to secure that. And then I can trim away the excess. I'm going to wrap this down just a little bit, making a little bit of a platform for the red chenille. The red chenille is also a rayon chenille, and it is just a fine, sized fine red chenille. Same thing, I'm going to pull some of the fluff off the end of this so that I am tying in the actual core fibers. 
wrapping that down against that butt right in the back. Now I'll advance my thread forward, securing all of those butt ends and loose ends down. Bringing my thread up to the front. There is no rib on the Fitzmaurice. And again, I'll take my hackle pliers and attach this. And I'm going to twist up. You can see that. I'm twisting up the chenille just to tighten that body up a little bit. The rayon chenille tends to kind of get flat when it's carded and, and packaged. I'm going to wrap this around like my other one. I'm just getting the start of my first wrap back here. So I don't want to start wrapping in here because then I've got a gap. I'm going to go ahead and just put that wrap right there in front of the back black chenille and then just start working my way forward. I'm going to stop an eye length behind the eye of the hook because I do have a throat and a wing to tie in, and I don't want to crowd up on to the eye too much. Trim away that excess, and then get all of that tied down, smoothed off. My thread right against the chenille, I'll put in my throat. The throat is some yellow hackles. I'm using some schloppen here. I like the soft schloppen for a throat on the wet flies. I get a couple of slips of that off of a feather. I tie this in so that the throat goes back somewhere after the point of the hook to the barb is where I like it. A little bit longer. Some like it shorter. I'm going to Anchor that in, end up with my thread right up against that red chenille. I'll trim away the excess here. A little bit here, I've got a better pair of scissors with a little sharper point. I'll clean that up and now I'm going to wrap forward and back, anchoring all of those butt ends down, cleaning this up for our wing. Just cleaning that up so I have a nice profile for the wing, a nice flat area to tie in that wing. The wing is listed in Bergman's book as a brown mallard, and I have since discovered that back in the day when they would write brown mallard, what they were talking about was not a mallard feather, like this is a typical mallard flank feather that dyed brown. They were talking about bronze mallard. So that's what we call it these days is a bronze mallard, but they refer to it as brown mallard. Now the bronze mallard that I have is very nice, and I like to reserve that for wings for spay and tea flies or wet flies, things like that. So I am actually using some brown mallard, meaning natural mallard flank here that's dyed brown. I've taken a nice feather here and cut the center out, and I'm going to then fold all those barbs together to make the wing for the fly. I'll tie that in so the wing goes maybe about halfway down the tail. I'm going to help this a little bit because with that chenille back there, it can very easily kick the wing up a little bit. So I'm going to push the front down and let that thread kind of pull that down. And then holding the rest of that wing tight over that chenille, I want to keep it from, you know, kicking up too much. I want to have more of a swept wing like that. Trim away the excess. And now it is a matter of cleaning up this head area here with the thread. Whoops, my thread got a little bit untwisted there. So 
I'm going to make certain I have any of the butt ends of that wing covered up. I don't want to put too many wraps in here. I want to keep it smooth and I uh, don't want it to get too big. But with it all covered up, I can flatten my thread, put in a whip finish. Trim away my thread. Got one little extra bit of thread that didn't get cut, which kind of broke off. And I'll put a little bit of head cement on both sides of that head. And in a moment, I'll come back and I'll put some black lacquer on that to dress up the head a little bit, seal it up really nice, and that will complete our Fitz Maurice. Colorful fly. I think this would definitely qualify as a kind of an attractor pattern with the nice peacock curl yellow and the red in there. But it's a handsome little whip fly. That is the Fitzmaurice. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.